uh, the Arcade of Mississauga, this is when Robert Freeman was still around. Mm -hmm. uh, they did an, um, an exhibition on outsider art. And outsider art, basically art made by people who never taken art courses, never studied art. Uh, some of them have mm -hmm. mental disabilities. Uh, and I was so moved by the work because it was almost like, I don't know how to explain, I don't even know how I, I can still explain it. It was like, it was just created. It wasn't thought out. It wasn't looked at anything. It was just created. These people just created the artwork. And it's almost like, for me, that was like a, a free experience experience that I don't have to think about what I'm creating. Just let it come out. Just let it happen. Podcasting for the Art Gallery of Mississauga, this is Border Crossings, a podcast where we listen to stories and experiences from artists, innovators, community activators, and people living creative lives. I'm your host, Vassandra, and I can't wait to unpack the magic of border crossings with you. Are you curious about living a creative life fearlessly? Then hang tight for a dose of inspiration. Hi, Claudio. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. So how are you today? Doing well, doing well. Just uh, trying to enjoy the weather and enjoy, you know, this self-isolation that we're still going through. So. Just gonna make the best of it. I hear you, and I know that you've been uh, selected for the City of Mississauga Arts and Isolation Project. You want to tell yes. us a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, basically, it was a call put out for to the Arts and Culture Division in the City of Mississauga, where mm -hmm. the, they were looking for artists to create artwork that they want to be part of their permanent collection, just as a way, I guess, mm -hmm. to document this time uh, during the COVID pandemic. So I submitted a proposal that what I wanted to do, because one of the questions they were asking is, how does this affect you as an artist? Mm -hmm. And my statement basically was that artists, we're used to isolation anyways, to work on our own to begin with. Mm -hmm. But for an artist to really make a living, we have to interact with the public. In other words, we have to have exhibitions, we have to have shows, we have to meet with people and talk to people and explain the artwork especially because to me one of the essential aspects of any kind of art form whether it's dance music um visual arts which i do is there's a presentational quality to it you have to present it to the public in some way mm -hmm. obviously in the situation we're in how do you present it to the public how are you able to make a living if you can't show your artwork if they can't see it if the, if the buyer or the viewers can't see it, you know, in real time in front of them. So that was my kind of statement. So I guess they kind of like the idea of me coming up with a piece where my focus will be on showing the artist how the this isolation is almost like it's a good thing. It's a dichotomy. It's a good thing because we're used to it. But how do I make a living from it? How do I show it to people? How do I present it to the public? How do I get the, uh, if I'm trying to get the, the, the work across? So it was, all, and I guess they liked what they ha I had to say. So uh, I got chosen. That's brilliant. And when you get a concept like this, the, the way you're describing it, a dichotomy, there's mm -hmm. isolation, which artists is used to, but it, he also needs to interact with the, with the public to be able to kind of uh, put himself out there, right? He literally needs to put his work and himself out there as well. When you get a concept like this, uh, Claudia, I'm super curious to know, what's your process like? How do you go about building this concept into a project? That's kind of really hard because uh, I think what I do, that might be a little bit different, I'm not sure, I'm just the way I work, is I don't, think in terms of an idea or a concept i think more in terms of a experience or a sense mm -hmm. and i don't mean like a sensing uh as in emotional but like a sense as in you know when uh th think of it in terms of a, when a tree when a wind blows and you mm -hmm. feel that wind against you or mm -hmm. you're touching a bark there's a feeling there and so 
what I try and focus more on is how do you experience it? How does it feel from a, from a sense, from a point of view of, of sensing it? So mm -hmm. my, my, so the concept, the idea comes more like how, you know, like I said, how do you experience it? How do you feel it? And I ask a lot of questions around that because being human beings, we mm -hmm. all, we were different that in how we, like we all feel or sense things the same way, mm -hmm. but how we interpret it is where the, uh, the interest comes in. So how, you know, like I remember this one cartoon, for instance, um, where the person runs in and they say, you know, we have to self isolate ourselves because of the virus. And of course the cartoonists, mm -hmm. they're drawing and they're saying, so what's the problem? Uh, so to me, it's not so much of an idea when you see that, it's more of a, a, a feeling of it. You, and I know how that feels. I, I know how that's, yeah, that feels in terms of a sense and that how you experience right. that. But then, you know, when I was thinking about that, I said to myself, I'm isolating myself right now. One of the ways I make a living is I'm out there doing festivals or like for the comics, especially these conventions. Mm. I can't do that now. How do I present that? How does that make me feel? How do we, what, what new experiences is that bringing in for me? Because I, I'm kind of removed from the potential of selling that work or from showing that work. So I go more from that, that, right, the more that of, advantage. Yeah, yeah, the, the more of, of, of the feelings, that's what I expect the emotion, but the feeling like, Something is different now. I don't know what it is. Something mm -hmm. is different. What is it? And then you ask yourself those questions. So I kind of work it more from that perspective, if that makes any sense. Oh, of course, a hundred percent. And I've got to tell you, I think that's what I've seen your work. And um, I think you're a master of kind of communicating that feeling because when you look, when I look at your work, that's exactly that's exactly what I get as a response. Oh, I feel something. Like I feel if you're if you're drawing something that expresses movement, I feel that movement. So oh, I totally get it. I, I get what you're saying. Okay. You're completely. I'm glad you shared that because I've always been curious about that. Um, I also want to know one more thing. Since you sound like an experiential thinker and a feeler, I want to know. Uh, could you share something about a project? that has impacted your life the most, that moved you the most towards your artwork? Well, I think there's two in particular. Uh, hopefully what I'm gonna say kind of answers your question uh, the best I would know how. <laughs> the first one was when, um, when I first met my wife, she mm -hmm. gave me a book by Haim Potok, who's a well-known Jewish writer. The name of the mm -hmm. book was called My Name is Asher Lev. And it's the story of a Jewish person who grew up in a very conservative household in a conservative area of in New York, who becomes an artist. And mm -hmm. one of the things he's taught is how to use his emotions when creating artwork. And to explain the feelings that he was experiencing in his environment. He does a painting uh, that's called, he calls the Brooklyn Crucifixion. Mm -hmm. And it creates a big scandal. Mm -hmm. And in the book, the rabbi says to him, you know, it's best if you leave New York or US for a while and go overseas. Hmm. And the character at the end of the book is praying to God, I guess, talking to God. And he says, will I always be somebody who lives in two worlds at the same time? And his answer is yes. That's, he will always be that kind of an artist. When hmm. that, when I read that, that made sense to me. All of a sudden, I felt, you know, that's exactly how I feel. I feel like I'm living in two worlds at the same time. And I think because, especially with we're dealing with border crossings, you know, with the mm -hmm. same. Um, my parents are Italian immigrants. 
I have a younger sister, six years younger than me, who was born in Italy. I'm the only one in my family that's born in Canada. Hmm. And I've lived in Italy as well, besides living in Canada. So I've always felt that I live in two worlds at once. I grew up Italian in the Italian traditions. I also, you know, with other Italian households, but I'm also Canadian because I lived and I've moved around. So I've always felt that I live in two worlds at the same time. And that kind of impacts a lot of my work that this looking at that dichotomy. And maybe that's the reason why I don't, I don't really look at concepts when I, when, or ideas when I look at artwork, more mm -hmm. an experience or a feeling behind it. And that kind of probably one of the things that shaped me. Uh, the other one I would say that kind of shaped me was, and it's actually through the Art Gallery of Mississauga, which is funny enough. Wow. Uh, the Art Gallery of Mississauga, this is when Robert Freeman was still around. Mm -hmm. uh, they did an, um, an exhibition on outsider art. And outsider art, basically art made by people who never taken art courses, never studied art. Uh, some of them have mm -hmm. mental disabilities. Uh, and I was so moved by the work because it was almost like, I don't know how to explain, I don't even know how I, I can still explain it. It was like, it was just created. It wasn't thought out. It wasn't looked at anything. It was just created. These people just created the artwork. And it's almost like, for me, that was like a, a free experience, free experience that I don't have to think about what I'm creating. Just let it come out. Just let it happen. And so when I approach my work, I mm -hmm. kind of, I try and do the same thing. I don't try and think about it. I don't try and try and figure out what the idea or the concept behind it is. It's just mm -hmm. let it come out as I'm feeling and experiencing it. And so it's kind of where I guess, it, again, it led me to more work in that way. Some people actually say that it's more in terms of um, letting your subconscious take over. Mm -hmm. uh, some people have talked about it that way. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I guess that's just, it's just the way it seems work best for me. Maybe part of it is also being Italian. You're, you know, we're supposedly very emotional people. So mm -hmm. I just let it out <laughs> and it worked better that way. Anyway. Wow. I don't know if that makes any sense. Oh, 100 percent You know what, uh, Claudio, as I'm listening to you, I feel like your work um, is almost like a spiritual practice for you. You're pretty much tapping into some um, a different reality and or a different dimension of your personality or your being, and then you're sort of expressing it, right? Um, yeah. I'm curious to know why did you pick comic arts as a medium? Like if you're experiencing things, it could be anything. Why did you pick comic arts? This is, uh, that's gonna be uh, a question. It was funny because I still, the, my best answer right now is I don't know. But <laughs> the best way I could probably explain it is, I think, well, I discovered comics really when I was about five, six years old. And at this point I was living in Italy. Mm -hmm. And when we moved to Italy, I didn't know anything. I didn't, I couldn't speak any Italian at all. Like mm -hmm. I said, I'm the only Canadian born in my family. So when we moved to Italy to live there, mm -hmm. we, I wasn't sent to any special school. I, mm -hmm. believe, I was just sent to a regular school and I was struggling because I didn't know the language. Mm -hmm. I couldn't look, and my, both my parents were working mm -hmm. and I was meeting all my relatives because my mother comes from a very large family. She comes from a family of six surviving children. It was five, nine originally. And how do I communicate with them? I don't know. And so what I would do in Italy is there's a newspaper, a store where they, they have all the, the newsstand where you buy all the magazines and stuff. And that's where I came across comics. So I think that might be, have been my first, my first, um, I guess interaction or, sort of. yeah yeah it, it was a comics itself so that maybe that's what had the impact on me uh mm. that's one thing i think the other reason when i think about it a bit more is um and here's the best way i could describe it mm -hmm. let's say you're walking down the street and you see two gentlemen mm -hmm. uh in the corner they're both smoking their cigarettes 
-hmm. You don't know what they're saying, but you see some hand movements, some look like they're talking to each other. One is slightly hunched over. Mm -hmm. So in a comic, you can take that same mo that same uh, scene, and now mm -hmm. you can actually recreate it. You can, and then you can ask yourself questions within that is, what were they talking about? Why was that one character hunched over as he was talking to the other one? Why did the other one raise his hand and point his finger? What mm -hmm. could he have been talking about based on their body language, what they're wearing? Uh, and then you could create actually a scene there from your own perspective. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the amazing things about comics is that you can actually build not just a story, but you can build a moment within this piece of paper. And what's interesting about the comics as well is, whereas with mo many arts, um, you know, like painting or sculpting, you have to you have to get a lot of materials. Mm -hmm. With comics, all you have to do is eat a piece of paper and a pen, mm -hmm. and then sit down, and then you let your imagination go or your own feelings or emotions or experiences go, and then it's almost like you're letting you're expressing what you're experiencing, and you can actually kind of communicate that mm -hmm. to another person because we do communicate. You know, and they show this, we do communicate visually. If you mm -hmm. look right from the start, from the beginning of time in the mm -hmm. last 12 case, we mm -hmm. communicate what's happening visually. And it's not, and we can also create it by a series of images put together where mm -hmm. it's a fascinating thing. There's a Chinese artist, and I can never pronounce his name properly, so I'm not going to try and do it. Mm -hmm. But in an interview, uh, he said that the Chinese have a saying, we read a drawing. And I'm saying, wait a minute. So in other words, do we actually, when we look at a drawing, like I say in a comic, are we looking at it or are we reading it? So are we reading the moments, images put together? And as an art, it's say that we have, when we have an art show, that the pieces, mm -hmm. the artworks are all speaking to each other. Well, in comics, these yes. images are all next to each other. Are those images right. speaking to each other? And are we involved in the discussion? Are we looking at the images or are we reading the images? And if that's the case, what sensations are we having as a result of what we're reading by, by reading the images? What sensations, what experiences are we having seeing these images talk to each other? And uh, I think that there's something fascinating about the medium that you, you actually do that sort of stuff. And there's been some, a lot of artists who've kind of experimented with that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that's what draws me in so much. So I'm sorry, I'm going on a little bit too long for this, but. Uh, Not at all. You know what, in fact, uh, I feel so inspired just listening to you right now. I feel like picking up a pen and just trying to draw something out. You are awesome, especially when you've uh, conducted workshops for us as well in the past. I'm keen to, keen to hear your point of view here, uh, Claudio. Mm -hmm. How do you see the potential for comics in the art community? Wow. <laughs> uh, I okay. There's there's a couple of things I would say. Mm -hmm. The first thing I would say, I think the arts community has barely even scratched the potential of comics for what they could use in mm -hmm. in, in there. I think at the most I've done is they just touched it or brushed against it. Mm -hmm. I think the potential is limitless at this point because i don't think it's even been like i said i don't think it's even been considered i mean the only artist that really looked at comics mm -hmm. was actually they say is lichtenstein when he actually mm -hmm. uh borrowed images from a comic and created these paintings and he would sell them for you know millions of dollars and i remember reading an article where this art critic was well, one critic was criticizing Leeches. He says, why are you using comics to create art with? That makes this, you know, lowest of the lowest art forms around. And you're going to create art out of this? 
And in the comic, in the people in the comics business were saying, oh, great. So we're trying, we're just getting, we're struggling to get by making, creating art by making comics. And this guy's making a million dollars by, by, by stealing our images. So mm -hmm. I remember hearing that during that time period with Lichtenstein, there were some real tensions going on. Mm -hmm. uh, so to me, it almost as though it says that there's still barely being touched or barely even being considered. I think just mm -hmm. recently in the last number of years mm -hmm. where uh, there's been in the States some museums which have opened up which show comics as an art form where you can actually see comic book pages. Um, I would say North America, whereas in Europe, I've heard there's a number of, of museums dedicated just to comics and the, and the mm -hmm. art form. Uh, one of them actually being in Belgium, which actually had a chance to see, which was fantastic. It was amazing. Um, but there's so much more you can do with it. And mm -hmm. and that can be used to, to look at ideas and concepts and make comments about the contemporary world. Uh, it's bare, like I said, it's, there's, you can do so much with it that it's almost like a limitless potential. I mean, and I do know of, of uh, comic book artists. Uh, one of them is an English one by the name of Dave McKee, who's actually created uh, exhibitions and he's brought in some comic book pages as part of the exhibitions installations. Um, Art Spiegelman, who did Mouse, actually uh, got together with some performers to actually create a comic using dance performance. So, what's the potential? The, I would say it's at this point, it's so open because. Nobody's touching it, and especially mm -hmm. I don't, if I can't. And I think I'm kind of upset that Canadians are not the Canadian art scene is not even willing to look at it. I I, I think uh, that upsets me even more. It's almost like they're still keeping the two the two worlds separate, and it's like mm -hmm. I think I would like to see it really merge together. Um, right. I gotta say though, your workshop at the art gallery of Mississauga was sold out in I think the first oh. few days that we even announced it. So I'm curious to know, do you um, host workshops or where is it that, how can your, uh, how can a potential artist who's interested in your work or interested in learning from you, how do they get in touch with you? Where can they stay? Where can they uh, find you? Well, uh, well, first of all, the best, thing, the best way to get a hold of me, obviously, is through my, uh, my um, websites. Uh, I have a couple mm -hmm. of websites. You know, uh, one is Painted Comics through WordPress.com. Mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. other one is uh, my own a Wix site that I have, a, a C. Gerardo. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been, well, it's funny you say this because I'm not sure if, how this is going to react. So I hope. I don't cre create any problems here. Mm -hmm. For the past number of years, I've been working really hard to try mm -hmm. and do more workshops. And mm -hmm. it's been an extreme struggle mm -hmm. in Mississauga for people mm -hmm. to do my workshops to teach comics. There was mm -hmm. one situation, and I won't name names, okay? So I prefer not to. Mm -hmm. But there was one situation where I actually approached some, I approached this one institution about mm -hmm. doing comics. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, we already have a cartooning workshop. And I said, mm -hmm. no, not a cartooning workshop. Mm -hmm. Comics. Mm -hmm. What you're talking about is drawing cartoons and creating the characters. I'm talking about telling a story. I'm talking about using these images in order to tell a story, using these images to get a, a concept or an idea across and how to use these images together. Mm -hmm. And... The person didn't see it that way. They said, as long as we teach a cartoon workshop, it's the same thing. And so there's a frustration. There was another, and then so I've been trying to really hard for the last couple of years to set something up, and it's just I just keep getting I don't get anybody interested in it. The only ones I've been have had a chance to do it was with with um, Visuals Mississauga before, mm -hmm. you know, where I taught Magic Mondays. I taught some. Uh, I couldn't do the comic workshop, but I did a comic strip workshop as a nice. way to kind of get started. And what was really fascinating, if I may, if I can, what was really fascinating with the comic strip workshop was when I was talking to them how to do a comic. It was almost something that they they never knew about, and some of the people were getting 
really excited. There was one lady came up to me and she was wanting to do the comic strip dealing with angels. Mm -hmm. And she said, there's a magazine I know of. If I could come up with some strips, maybe I could approach them about the idea of angels. And I said, well, yeah, that sounds great. So if you, if you, you know, it sounds fantastic because she had all this, she had read all this, done this reading of angels. And there was another lady who said, I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to think about. I don't know what to say. I said, mm -hmm. well, tell me a situation that you found extremely odd. And it was funny. She said to me, well, I do, I, I sell real estate for, you know, I do real estate, I'm a real estate agent. So, and I said, okay. And I said, and I had this one client. Oh my God, they were driving me crazy. They were just, <laughs> I was just losing my mind. And I said, do a strip on that. And she said, on that? I said, yeah, go ahead, do it. <laughs> so she was doing it. She was getting out. So like, oh my God, it's amazing. I had all these, I, I did, I have all these ideas coming out now. And I said, that's, there's a start. And I said, that's, that's the other thing that some people don't understand about comics or, com you know, that most comics, believe it or not, they come from a very personal place. And most people don't think of that. They think it's entertainment. One example, uh, there's two comic strips I'm going to tell you that are come from a very personal place. The first one is Peanuts. Yeah. Most people don't see it that way. Charles Schultz once said this about his strip. He said this, if you want to get to know me, mm -hmm. just read my strip. <laughs> it's all there. And I was like, okay, let me try this. And I was like, oh my God, this was, it was freaking me out because I said, Charlie Brown, Charles Schultz. Okay. Yeah. Charles Schultz's father was a barber. Charlie Brown's father was a barber. Yeah. There were a lot of references to scripture. Charles Schultz uh, grew, went to an independent church. Mm -hmm. Lucy is cranky. Charles Schultz mentioned how sometimes he can be really cranky. I was like, mm -hmm. he put himself in those strips. So those yeah. characters are actually aspects of Charles Schultz. The other one is uh, For Better or For Worse by Lynn Johnson. Mm -hmm. And Lynn Johnson said that when she had to create the comic strip, she said, I just did a strip about my family. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And so everything, so there's no wonder people got so close to this. Because it was her. It was her family. It was her experiences. It's what she was going through that yeah. she was putting in. So this is where some of the people don't see how that, and this is, again, where it goes back to the question you asked about the arts community, why they put, that there's so much potential for this medium in the arts community that's not even being touched upon yet. Right, right. I hear you. But I got to say that uh, you're incredibly gifted when oh. it comes to interacting with people at a workshop. Um, I want to say that um, I, at least I feel the Mississauga community is blessed when you put yourself out there and you uh, interact with the community through your work and through your workshops as well. Thank, Thank you. you so much, uh, Claudio. And I just hope there's more to come. Uh, with the art gallery of Mississauga as well as with the Mississauga community. Yeah, well, I mean, I would, I would love, to, what I, you know, one of the things I would really love to do if I, if I ever get a chance, I'm not sure mm -hmm. if I will. I do know that Mississauga started doing a, a comic book expo, which is really good, but mm -hmm. I would like to do a zine festival at Mississauga. Lovely. And one, I would like to see a zine festival take place in Mississauga, not just for the artists, to use this as a way to create comics or zines which they can talk about their own life and talk about their own experiences with this from a political, cultural, gender, but to actually put it in a way where they can actually interact with the people mm -hmm. and for the people to really be able to read the stories mm -hmm. and, and, and experience what they're experiencing and feeling what they're feeling and sensing what they're sense. And that's, what I would love to see really in Mississauga, and then also do some cross, cross like I would love to work with a dance group. When it, mm -hmm. I have this idea, I came up one time about comics, where I would love to work with a dance group and work with them and create something with with the idea of a with a, co a concept or idea of a comic and how it can be used. Mm -hmm. So that's me. This is brilliant. More power to your vision, Claudio. 
keep it coming and uh, stay stay inspired and stay inspiring. Thank oh, you. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll do my best. Thanks for joining us on this episode. This podcast is an extension of the Border Crossings Project, a community engaged arts project funded by the Ontario Trillium Foundation, the Ontario Arts Council, and the City of Mississauga. Do you have a story to share with us? Are you living a creative life out there on your own? Well, I'm keen to hear from you. Write to me at agmconnect at mississauga.ca. Thank <laughs> you.